This video is brought to you by Triple Sleeve TCG. Check out their website at triplesleevetcg.com. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Gold Paladin tech profile. I'm Richard, and today I'm going to be going over the hybrid Gurgit, Percival, and Ezel build that um, some people have been adapting to, and I think it's kind of fun, so I thought I'd try it out. So this is my take on it, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So... Let's go right into it, get these guys out of the way. Starter is gonna have to be Crimson Lion Cub Curif. Really doesn't matter which starter you use because you're not gonna be running Bowman, but since it is an Ezel themed deck and Ezel's gonna be in there, you know what? Just slap the boy in there, but you know what? Feel free to throw in your SP Coel if you got one in there too. Not a flex, promise. <laughs> so, Starters can be anyone you want, but for the Ezel variant, you can go with Kerf. On to the grade threes. We got one copy of Incandescent Lion Blonde Ezel. Just the one, because you don't need any more. The only goal of Blonde Ezel is to just be Superior Road from the deck by Wonder Ezel. Um, the whole goal of this deck for this reason is because you want that extra additional Excel marker as soon as possible. So why not get an Excel marker during your grade two turn, you know? So that's the whole point of this deck. You ride into Blonde Ezel while your opponent's at grade two, maybe even at grade one. And then, you know, you start, you know, getting those early uh, Percival procced off because, you know, now you're on grade three. Boom. That's kind of gross. <laughs> you're on grade three. And, you know, you're like, hey, you know what? Percival skill. My Vanguard's at grade three. I'm going to make an Excel marker and then... Call it an Aglavale. Start beating your opponent with that. So now you got two Exile markers where your opponent's at grade one. It's fun, right? So make do with that with what you'd like. And then obviously the kill switch is going to be Gurgit throughout the turn. So kind of a one-trick pony. But when it does its trick, it's pretty cool. So uh, next up for grade threes, four copies of Sunrise Rain Knight Gurgit. <clears throat> SP. Sorry, I had something stuck in my throat. Um, during your turn, uh, all units placed by card abilities and this unit gain additional power based on the number of Excel markers you have. So you're going to be turboing out Excel markers as fast as possible. So hopefully by the time you ride to Gurgit, you already got your third marker. So this unit plus your other units placed by uh, card abilities get 15k. Pretty, pretty cool. On top of that, if you do call Percival during that turn, that's 20k, so you get the idea. Um, other skill, Vanguard Circle, once per turn, auto. Uh, when it attacks, or when it is attacked, you can have plus one, look at the top five cards of your deck, choose two from among them, call them to rear, uh, shuffle the rest of your deck. If it is your opponent's turn, you call them to the Guardian Circle. So, defensive skill is cool, super aggressive skill, and I love it. And... It just takes advantage of the number of Excel markers you're making. Excel gives you draws, so you just resources as well. Everything's so great about this card. I love it. So, like I said, because Gurgit wants to take advantage of those extra Excel markers, you want to go into Blonde Ezel, use Percival as much as possible, go into Gurgit, get all that power from the Excel markers, and just beat your opponent to death with all those big numbers. So, next up... To continue on to the trend of how this deck was played, we've got four copies of Bluish Flame Liberator Percival, the best card in the whole deck. So, this unit's Vanguard skill is all your additional units on your uh, Excel markers get 5k. So, you don't want to ride this, but it's there, which is nice. Uh, Van or Rear, when it's placed, you count plus one, discard a card, get an imaginary gift to Excel. Then search your deck for search your deck or drop zone for Oath Liberator Aglaville and call it. If you search your deck, you shuffle, and you can only use this card name's ability once per turn. So, one Percival per turn makes sense because it'd be broken if you couldn't. If you could do it more than once, and you know you want to maximize as much as possible. So four copies, and just the fact that you can pull Aglaville from the deck or the drop, really versatile. It's just an overall really great card, and I love Percival. It's also my favorite unit in the game, so <laughs> even more so to, to add to that, that I get to play my favorite card in Standard, so love me, my Percy. 
Lastly, for grade threes, one of the best gold paladin staples, Sagamore. Van or rear, when it's placed, uh, you soul blast one, draw a card, then call a card from your hand to rear. It procs off Gurgit, gives you a card. You don't really use soul, and you don't have to worry about losing soul. So this card is basically essentially free for the most part. It only sucks that it's only when it's placed from hand. Um, so you do have to keep in mind that, but it does help set up the battle phase and the main phase really well. And also, if you're able to superior call your, you know, Blonde Ezel, get that off, you're just immediately, you can start going into your Sagamores and start building your field, etc. So Sagamore is just a really great card, so you want to run a lot of these. Uh, I would run a fourth copy, but it feels like this deck doesn't need to go that hard since we're not running Mox Slash Dragon. So three seems to be fine for me. So that was it for grade threes. We're going on grade twos right now. So because the whole goal of the deck is Superior Red and Blonde Ezel, we need four copies of Wonder Ezel. And this is great because even if you don't proc off the Superior Ride for Blonde Ezel, Wonder Ezel is still a great staple for Gurgit. So its skill is Van, Soul Blast 1, Retire Crimson Lion Beast Howl from your rear, search your deck for Blonde Ezel, Ride it as Stand, and it loses a Drive check for the turn. So you don't get Twin Drive, but it's like a grade 2 turn, so it's fine. Other skill, when it's placed, you call a card from your hand to rear. The reason that's important is because that counts as a card being placed by a card ability, which procs off Gurgit's uh, first continuous skill, which is any card that's placed by a card ability gains power equal, gains 5k for each Excel marker you have. So if you swing with Gurgit during the battle phase and you call a Wonder Ezel, Wonder Ezel gets power, and then the unit you call from your hand during the battle phase through Wonder Ezel's skill also gets power. So multi-attacking, main phase setup, it's free. Literally, it's just one place call a card, so it's just great for Gurgit. And if you write it during a grade two turn, you have Howl on your hand, you go into Blonde Ezel. So kind of speaks for itself. You definitely want to run for Wonder Ezel if you're playing Gurgit regardless if you're playing this variant or not. Next up for grade twos, we got four Percivals, so we got four Aglavales. Uh, Vanguard Circle, when it's placed or ridden, um, kind of lost one, look at three cards on the top of your deck, call one, put the rest on the bottom of your deck so you don't shuffle. Other skill is when it attacks, you choose a rear guard, put it into your soul, this gets 10k, and at the end of the battle it goes back to your hand. So. Either way, if you ride Aglavale or ride Wonder Rezzle, you're going to have a really good ride turn, grade 2 turn, uh, just to proc off some abilities, so that's nice. And it's searchable with Percival, <laughs> like, you know, and it just gains power just for swinging and sucking up stuff for free, so really, really good grade 2. And lastly for grade 2s, it's a simple tech. We got Knight of Strong Favors, Berengaria, however you pronounce her name. So her skill is, uh, when it's placed by a card ability, you do one of the following below. So you can either counter blast to soul charge, or you can soul blast to counter charge. I'm assuming you guys can take a guess which one you're going to be doing 100% of the time. So this is based, since you already have enough soul, uh, and you're using Gurgit's counter blast pretty consi consistently every single turn, you want to have counter charge so your opponent doesn't deny you um, counter blasts. So... Uh, Prox often called by card ability, so you can call Sagamore or Wonder Ezel uh, during the main phase to call Berengaria. Use its skill to Soul Blast to counter charge, and then you have your Gurgit cost for the battle phase. So just a tech, so you can, you know, have more counter charge. That was it for grade twos. On to the grade ones. Uh, we're running four copies of Crimson Lion Beast Howl because this is a pon one trick pony deck, so we want to, you know, Make it work as much as we consistently can. So Howl's skill basically does not work at all during the whole game. <laughs> it's just there for the name, but I'll tell you what the skill is anyways. At the end of the battle, that it boosts. If you have a Vanguard with Ezel in its name, you canvas one, put it into your soul, and then you draw a card, then call a card from your hand. So the minute you ride Gurriet, this card is dead. So that's the main important thing. But it's literally there for the Wonder Ezel skill, and it goes off pretty consistently if you just, you know, wait it out and draw into it, or you just have it during your opening hand, so it's nice. 
Plus, Gurgit doesn't really need any grade ones for the most part, other than Gorbuduck and Dindrain, you know, to really operate. So it's just an extra shield, it's an extra 8k, you know, poke or booster, so it does its job just fine. So I think the Howl for this variant at four makes the most sense because you want to draw into it and see it. And after that, you know, it's just an 8k booster, which is perfectly fine. Next up, we got four copies of Dawning Night Gorbaduck, so it's your grade three search. So during your turn, Vanner Rear, if you called two or more things during the turn, it gets 5k. The other skill is when it's placed um, from hand, you look at the top five cards of your deck, reveal of a grade three. If you added a grade three from the top five to your hand, you discard a card, you know, shuffle your deck, all that stuff. So this is what helps you find Gurgit, helps you find Percival, even Sagramore. So all the grade threes are just really good in this deck. So playing Gorba deck is never a minus because every time you look at the top five and you add a grade three, you're thinning your deck for triggers. You're adding a really great card to your deck from your deck to your hand, most likely. And even if you added like a grade three and you're like, like let's say you didn't even proc off the Blondezel during the whole game. You look at top five, you find Blondezel, you're like, all right, cool. Add it to hand, discard it. You know, you just pulled out Blondezel out of the deck and you just saved yourself, you know, from having a grade three vanilla in your deck. So Gorbaduck's really good. Run out of four and your deck will be great. Um, lastly for grade ones, it is four copies of Listener of Truth Dindrain. Uh, it's there for, you know, your draws, your counter charges, great gold paladin staple. So Dindrain skill is when it's placed by a card ability, you soul blast one, and then you can either draw a card or counter charge. And if you counter charge, you gain 3k. Most likely you're going to be doing a bunch of counter charging because you're going to be using a lot of the counter blast from Gurgit, from Percival. Um, you might need to counter charge if you had to ride Aglavail, just so, you know, you can get those counter blasts back for the later, later game. Doubt you're going to use Howl, but if for whatever reason you're stuck on Ezel and you need to use Howl's skill for the battle phase, you have that to counter charge for. So, yeah, but overall, we're maximizing our counter charge with four Dindrain and a fifth Dindrain, if you basically want to call it that. So, we should be consistently fine with our uh, counter blasting. And that was it for grade ones. Uh, trigger lineup is really, really simple. Bring it back the traditional eight crit. So, you know, any, you know, vanilla crits you want. I did four, two, and two, but it's up to you guys. And four draw with the Halo Shield marks. So draw PGs are just really, really good. The crit sentinels are kind of whatever. Um, you can argue that you draw enough with Dindrain, but you're usually using Dindrain for the counter charge. So your draw triggers are your main way of resource building and draw PGs are great. So we're just doing eight crit, four draw. And lastly, four heal. So if it wasn't easy to explain to begin with, the whole point of the deck is to basically ride into Wonder Ezel. Uh, you are most likely going to have the Howl in your hand. So you would just call it literally anywhere. You can literally just reveal it to your opponent so your opponent knows that you're just gonna use it for its cost. You Soul Blast one, so any card in your soul, Kirif, doesn't matter, Soul Blast card, retire this. From the deck, search out Blonde Ezel and you get yourself an Excel marker. Following that, ideally, if you're lucky enough, maybe you had, for your, the grade three that was in your hand, you had an, a Percival. So your cards you're gonna be looking for, if you have already um, Wonder Ezel and Howl in your hand, you wanna have Percival ready to go. Call Percival to that Excel marker, counter blast, discard, get another Excel marker, draw a card, boom, you got Aglavale. Uh, you know, do your swing, get your drive check, swing, swing, suck Percival to the soul, bounce it back to your hand, and then the following turn, you just want to go straight into Gurgit. And then you get a third marker, and then your opponent may be at grade two, you know, so the power won't matter by then, but still abusing all those markers is great. Um, and then also, if your opponent is at grade three, you just boom, start swinging at them with all that power. So that's basically how the deck works. Uh, personal opinion, I don't think this is better than just like the pure 
great Percival build that includes Mox Slash Dragons and all that stuff because Mox Slash is such a great card. But because we are running Howl at four uh, and the Blonde Ezel, there really isn't the space to make up to add Mox Slash in the deck in a consistent manner. If you do, you could probably take out Berengaria, put in one Mox Slash, but if you're going to do that, just might as well just play the full Gurgit build, you know. But this is mostly just for fun, and I think at some point I might try it in a game just to, you know, flex that you're running three different generations of Gold Paladin, like, aces in your deck. Like, you just, you have Limit Break, Legion, and G, like, in the same deck. I think that's just so cool. So... That was it. That was the deck profile. Hope you guys like it. If you guys want to see this in a game, I hope maybe at some point later this year, I can maybe do that and arrange that some way, shape, or form, despite all the craziness going on in the world today. So stay safe, be caring, be kind, have a great year or new year. See you all in the next video. Bye.